Hi, Juan. How are you? Okay, so hi, everyone. And uh, welcome to the ICTS String Seminar. So today we are very happy to have uh, Juan Malasena from IIS, who will tell us about the black hole string transition. So please, Juan, take it away. Okay. Um, let me see. I think I think I'm not sharing the screen now, right? Or am I? No, you're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll share. Okay. Hopefully, you can see the screen. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure to be giving this talk. Uh, glad to be with you there. Um, and. Uh, this work is going is based with a uh, joint work with uh, Yimin Cheng and Ed Witten. And the outline of this talk is the following. So we'll consider black holes in weakly coupled string theory. And when the black hole size is close to the string scale, they are supposed to turn into highly excited strings. And uh, this has been previously conjectured. And we are going to explore the conjecture and try to understand exactly well, we're trying to understand a little bit better how this happens. So we'll basically discuss some aspects of this transition. And surprisingly, the situation is different in the heterotic and the type two string cases. Um, and we'll also discuss some implications of this for certain charged black holes. So the assumptions uh, throughout this talk will be that we will be considering a weakly coupled string theory. So we take G much smaller than one. And we'll set the string to one, and uh, G Newton therefore will be of order uh, G string squared. Um, we'll consider either the type two or heterotic superstrings, and we'll work in D equal to four. So that means four non compact directions and six compact dimensions that are not going to play any role in the discussion. So if you consider a highly excited string, uh, so that um, will be oscillating and will have, let's say, some mass very much larger than the string scale. And then such strings have an entropy, which is linear in the mass uh, with a coefficient um, uh, given by some particular number, which uh, we call the inverse uh, Hagedorn temperature. And uh, this, um, this fact that the entropy is linear in the mass implies that the thermal ensemble is well-defined only when beta is bigger than beta h, or the temperature is lower than this so-called higher than temperature. That's why this is a special temperature. That's just simply because in the partition function, uh, we have the usual uh, suppression factor, and then we have the entropy factor from this first term. And only if this prefactor is negative, is this uh, integral well-defined. There are some powers here that I didn't uh, discuss. So there is some log terms here that I am disregarding. But um, in any case, we, uh, we have this maximum temperature. Um, now, so that's, uh, those are just the strings. Then we have the black holes and um, they are, we can trust the gravity description if uh, the Schwarzschild radius is much bigger than one, much bigger than the string scale. And you can also compute the leading alpha prime corrections in that uh, large radius limit. And they were computed uh, long ago. And you can ask what happens uh, as these black holes approach the string size. Um, and in principle, uh, we should get the, some kind of stringy generalization of the Schwarzschild solution. Um, in the case of the Einstein theory of gravity, the Schwarzschild solution was found soon after general relativity was invented. But in string theory, so we know essentially the classical equations of string field theory, which is just the, the conformal invariance condition on sigma models. And, but we still haven't found really the simplest spherical asymmetric solution. And this talk will be about aspects of the simplest spherical asymmetric solution. Um, but some insight can be uh, obtained by thinking about the, uh, this plot. So this is, you take the mass um, in the horizontal axis of the black of the configuration and the entropy in the vertical axis. So you can plot here the free string uh, answer, which would be a straight, straight line. And you can plot here the black hole answer, which is a quadratic function of the mass, such as the entropy is proportional to the Schwarzschild radius square, and the mass is linear in the Schwarzschild radius. So this is a quadratic function of the mass. And these two lines, uh, if you extrapolate them beyond their regime of validity, they cross uh, when the black hole size is of order one. This is sometimes called the uh, correspondence point, and various uh, people uh, discuss this. Um, and so the, the 
conjecture is that, well, when the black hole gets to be this size, perhaps it becomes a, a highly excited uh, ball of strings. But uh, of course, uh, this point is beyond the uh, regime of validity of either the free string answer or the uh, black hole answer, the, the gravity, classical gravity answer. So, but we can still ask whether there is a smooth transition between these black holes and highly excited strings. And one reason for asking this question is that the description is rather different in the two sides. So on the string side, the microstates are fairly explicit, but there isn't anything similar to the black hole interior. And on the other hand, for black holes, there is an interior, but there are no obvious microstates. So it would be nice to connect them. So that's a general motivation. Um, we will not uh, say anything about uh, about this connection. We, we are stuck at some previous point, but this is a long-term motivation, let's say. And another motivation is that uh, we can try to understand how uh, string theory changes black hole thermodynamics, just to understand uh, what stringy corrections do to, let's say, black hole entropy formulas when they are large and uh, <clears throat> With eventually you, you might want to generalize other entropy formulas to, to string theory, um, like Ruta Kainagi formula and so on. Okay, so um, as I said, the first order corrections can be found in this uh, plot and they roughly look like this. And right now I'm going to be talking about these modifications from the, the string side. Um, before doing that, we'll discuss some comments on uh, strings at finite temperature. Um, so as in any other theory, you can consider a finite temperature situation by uh, going to Euclidean space and making the Euclidean time compact. And the new feature that appears in string theory is that a string can wind around, along this compact direction. So you have this uh, winding mode. And this uh, winding mode has a mass. So if you view it as a field in the lower dimensions so the spatial dimensions, uh, it has a mass, which is of order beta squared. Um, minus uh, some constant, and this constant is also the square of this inverse Hagen temperature, which uh, we discussed before. So when we get to this special temperature, this uh, mode becomes massless. And if we are slightly above, uh, if we have a beta slightly bigger than beta H or temperature slightly below the Hagen temperature, this mode is very light. And we could include it as uh, one of the light modes in the low, in the spatial, in the action for the spatial theory, for the spatial dimension. So in our words, um, in D minus one dimensions, we would have an action which uh, will include the Einstein gravity term and some other massless fields like uh, the radius of this dimension and also uh, the dilaton that I didn't write here. And also uh, the this mode, this, um, this winding mode that is light now. And so because it's light, the field theory approximation uh, will be good. And we can neglect all other higher stringy modes. OK, so you can, uh, you can solve those equations. And this leads to an interesting solution that was uh, first found by Horowitz and uh, Polchinski. And uh, it's a <clears throat> localized solutions in, in three spatial dimensions. Um, when, so we are considering four non-compact dimensions. Um, and it, it has a localized profile for the winding mode. So roughly speaking, the uh, winding mode has a spherically symmetric uh, distribution. And it describes a self-gravitating string. I have a question. Dynamic equilibrium. Yes, please. So uh, for the, what happens to the, so these are super strings, right? I mean, you're talking about super yes, strings. Yes. So yes. what happens to the fermionic modes? The well, the fermionic modes, modes. Uh, so the strings are, uh, yeah, yeah. OK, so the this winding mode that we were talking about uh, just a moment ago, it's a bosonic mode, OK? Yeah. So it's just a boson, and. No, so it, you have uh, the massless uh, bosonic modes are like the graviton and the dilaton also, right? Apart from the y Yes, yes, yes. So you have, yeah, yes. Oh, OK, I, I understand better your question. Yeah, so here I, I've only included the massless uh, bosonic modes. There are also massless fermionic modes, as uh, you're saying. And, uh, but those are, are not uh, going to be excited in this solution. So those are set to zero in this solution. Um, OK. And uh, so if you were to consider quantum fluctuations around the solution, then you would have to include them. 
Oh. Right? This is as usual, like for example, if you take the black hole solution, also you don't uh, turn on any of the fermionic modes. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you, you can view the solution as describing a self-gravitating string in thermodynamic equilibrium. So it's some kind of string that is oscillating and is held together by the gravitational force, a kind of uh, string star, let's say. Um, now it has the peculiar property that as you increase the mass, its size uh, decreases. And um, this also, um, when it, it has uh, an associated uh, temperature and that this is a temperature measured at infinity. And um, as, as beta goes away from beta h, the, the, temper the mass actually gets larger. So this size, uh, of course, in order for to trust the gravity approximation, the size needs to be uh, much bigger than one. And that implies that g square m should be uh, much less than one. And so uh, we are still we're still far from the correspondence point, which would be at the, when the size is of order one, right? So this approximation is good uh, far away somehow from the correspondence point. So, so, <clears throat> so yeah, sorry, who, uh, yeah, sorry yeah, Quint, what does, since you mentioned the dilaton, what does it do? It gets drawn to stronger coupling uh, in the solution or? Yes, yes. So, um, well, actually, uh, let me remember. Uh, no, it gets it gets uh, driven to weaker coupling. So the the um, but let, let me try to explain that point. So the um, the there is actually a single mode that uh, gets excited in this solution, which is uh, uh, it, it's basically the radius of the internal dimension and uh, and some some combination of the radius of the internal dimension and the deleton. So if you if you look um, if, if you look to the theory in d minus one dimensions, right? Uh, in that theory, there is only one mode that gets excited, which is the the radius of the internal dimension. You can view it as analogous to the Newtonian potential. It's not exactly the Newtonian potential because in the higher dimensions, so in four dimensions, it's a mixture of a gravitational mode and uh, and the dilaton. So there are two forces that are acting on the string. One is the gravitational force um, and the Newtonian type gravitational force. And the other is the dilaton, um, and so in Einstein, in Einstein frame, the the string gets lighter when the dilaton becomes um, weaker, and somehow that's why the uh, the dilaton is driven to to lower values, right? Just to understand this. Um, okay, so um, sorry, Juan, could I ask? So yeah. the circle size you say gets smaller in the center? It gets smaller, yes. yes. And does it get so small that the local value of the circle size goes below the Hagedorn radius? Yes, yes, it does. It does, yes. Yes. We'll discuss that aspect a little later, but yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So in some sense, uh, well, yeah, I think I, I'm about to mention uh, that. So if, if I did that, we will we'll not discuss that completely, ask me again. Um, what, one question. So one. Was there another question? Yes, uh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, is there a, 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 I mean, uh, the T dual of this solution, can one understand that in more, you know, uh, is there a T dual version of this solution? Um, um, let me see. Uh, well, the, the, if, if you do a T duality, you, you would get um, a type type zero, type, uh, type zero, a theory of type zero, right? So a theory that has in, in the bulk a tachyon, right? Mm -hmm. And so it would be a solution that, um, because the circle has anti-periodic boundary conditions, right? Okay. Um, and yeah, you, you could do that T-duality and you get some solution that excites some momentum mode of that uh, tachyon. Okay. I have another um, question. Like yeah. this uh, string, this is a single string transitioning to a black hole, right? So it's not a it's it's not representative of a, of generic black holes which have multiple strings inside. Is that correct? Well, uh, yeah, I think it's basically a single string. But at, at this point, we haven't made a commitment of whether it's a single string or not. 
So this winding mode is in principle describing the full gas of strings. I mean, people have analyzed which state contributes the most, and it looks like the single string contributes the most. But in this discussion, we haven't made a commitment to, to that. Or I, I, haven't, I haven't made a statement about that. OK. So yeah. Um, so we, we, we can compute the entropy uh, of uh, this configuration. So one particular feature of this solution is that it has a classical entropy. So the, the entropy can be computed in the usual way by taking one minus beta dd beta. So this solution is not a black hole and the thermal circle never shrinks. And in typical gravitational situations, uh, in, in, in such circumstances, you would, you would not have any entropy, okay? Uh, however, in this case, uh, there is some explicit dependence on beta on the, on the mass of this field, and that implies that the uh, solution will actually have an entropy, despite the fact that the thermal circle never shrinks. And so you get some expression for the entropy, um, so, which is a further one over g squared, so some classical expression. And if you evaluate it, you find that this uh, to leading order gives s proportional to m. Actually, this should be beta h. So S proportional to M with the same beta H coefficient. And there is some correction here that can be computed. Um, as uh, Shiraz was just asking, uh, the, at, at this, the, the size of the circle at the center became smaller than the, uh, than the critical size. So at infinity, it's larger. Um, and so the mass square of this, uh, this tachyon is actually less than zero at the center of the solution. So it's a solution that describes this localized tachyon condensate. And we could view the spatial circle as um, this Euclidean time as a spatial circle, so like a Kaluza Klein compactification. And in that case, this uh, Horowitz Polchinski solution is a bubble decay solution. Could be viewed as a bubble decay where we start condensing the tachyon and then uh, this tachyon then continues condensing uh, when we go to Lorentzian signature. Uh, so it's conceptually related to Witten's uh, bubble of nothing decay of flat space of, the, of a Kaluza Klein compactification on a circle with anti-periodic boundary conditions on the circle. So, so, so sorry, then there's an instability for this bubble to grow bigger and sort of get- Yes, bigger. yes, there is, yes, yes, yes. So the, yeah, the, the this horowitz polchinski solution has one negative mode, which uh, corresponds to, to the value, which is consistent with this interpretation. So bubble decay interpretation uh, would imply that the solution should have a negative mode so you get the right i in the effective action. And indeed, the solution has uh, one negative mode. Uh, so can I think of the solution as the positive surface tension balancing the negative inside roughly, and then, then it can become- Yes, bigger. yes, 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, somehow, yeah, it's, it's basically like a bubble decay. So you have an effective potential for the tachyon, which is positive, right? That if, so for small values of the tachyon is positive and quadratic. Um, and then there's a quartic term that is negative that comes from the self-interactions. So you have an effective potential roughly like that, and this is like a tunneling solution um, uh, that, that starts from the, from the minimum when k is equal to zero to some point where it's non-zero. So that point that is non-zero is here, and then uh, that you form a little bubble, and then this bubble could expand and eat, eat, eat out all, all your space. So. Nice. Yeah, it's somehow conceptually similar to the to this Witten, Witten bubble of nothing. The Witten bubble of nothing, you you have well, a Euclidean black hole, and when the bubble expands in the center, you have nothing, right? Yeah. Um, and here instead, you have a region where the tachyon will be becoming very large, and we well, we don't really know how to treat that. I mean, that that's uh, beyond the regime of approximation in this discussion. So in this discussion, the the tachyon is small everywhere. So. Right, but if you allowed it to become large, it could go and pinch off the circle and then become really a bubble of nothing, right? Yeah, that's that's morally what is happening. Yeah, that that it, the, the tachyon is very large and a very a region with very, it's consistent with the idea that a region with a tachyon that is very large is the same as nothing. Uh, yeah. Now uh, it's instruct well. It's interesting to to draw the size as a function of the mass. So we have the black hole whose size is linear in the mass. Uh, we approach this region, which we cannot treat. That's this correspondence point. Or, um, 
Then we have this horowitz polchinski And then the free strain has a size that increases as the mass increases. Um, okay, so, um, and here, this, this point where these two merge is when this, this horowitz polchinski solution, when, um, when beta is very close to beta H and the mass uh, decreases and the size increases, the uh, solution at some point, um, uh, the, the quantum correction ceases to be uh, small compared to the original classical answer. So the, the quantum corrections become a further one. And that's where you're supposed to transition into that. We don't understand the details of this transition. That's maybe something that one could understand better. Um, sorry, one, I'm sorry to interrupt so much. Just one quick question. If you compute the entropy of your horowitz wilczynski solution at mass yeah. small compared to one over G squared and compa yeah. compare with the entropy of the free string at mass large compared to one, yeah. Do those two? Yeah. The, yeah. This the entropy is match at this point. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and, and did that have to work, or was that a coincidence? Well, it, it kind of had to work from this picture that it is a self-gravitating string, and this point is when uh, the self-gravity ceases to be valid. Yeah, we we expect this to work. Okay. And not not only do we, do we expect it to work, but it, it's just basically the fact. Uh, that we saw here that the entropy of this solution is just this has the same form as the entropy for a string. Unfortunately, I made a typo here. This beta should be beta h. Uh, so it, it, it has the same form. Right. I, I was thinking that the entropy, this beta m from the trivial solution comes from a one loop effect. Whereas here it looks like it's coming classically. So so yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, here it comes classically. Yeah, that's uh, something that is interesting about this discussion. So when once you have this classical tachyon condensate. The, you have uh, this classical entropy, and you're you're, you're getting this uh, this entropy which is linear in the mass. It has the same form as in the free string. The solution is not the same as in the free string. I mean, some as other aspects of the solution are not the same. The entropy is the same to leading order. You you can there there is a sub leading correction here which is uh, higher power of the mass, um, but um, yeah. So other aspects like the size, for example, are different in the free string and in this solution. So, yeah. Um, okay, so um, we, we can consider, uh, well, of course, you all know very well the geometry of the Euclidean black hole, so I won't discuss it. Uh, I'm only going to mention that uh, when you have a black hole also, you have a winding condensate. I mean, you if you consider a mode that has winding number, then uh, it will get a non-zero one-point function coming from a string that wraps uh, the Euclidean uh, cigar, so the ra radial and time dimensions. And that will give a small web for these uh, winding modes. Um, now, the this winding symmetry is broken, and the phase uh, of chi is related to the integral of the B field uh, on the cigar. And the quantum theory would integrate over the value of this B field and we would restore the symmetry. Okay. But still, chi square is non zero. Um, but that's just a quantum effect. So classically, we have a standard phenomenon of symmetry breaking. Uh, now, the interpretation of this winding uh, mode, this winding condensate, is, uh, can be viewed as a thermal atmosphere of strings that uh, are around the black hole horizon. So strings coming out of the horizon and back in. So it's um, even though it's a sort of a classical effect at the level of uh, string field theory, uh, can be viewed as a manifestation of Hawking radiation of uh, string, the Hawking atmosphere of strings. And its contribution to the entropy is formally of order one over G square, but uh, at least to my knowledge, it's not really calculable and because it's uh, con would be concentrated near the horizon, so I don't know how to calculate the entropy from this point of view. Though some authors have conjectured that perhaps uh, all the entropy comes from this, but uh, I, I didn't find a convincing argument. Um, now, the winding symmetry, notice that the winding symmetry is broken spontaneously both on the black hole phase and the highly excited string phase. So in both cases, there is this winding condensate, and this is consistent with the idea that they could be continuously connected. Okay. So, um, the black hole solution, so this horizontal line is, uh, is the beta. So when beta is close to beta h, we had this horowitz polchinski solution we've been discussing. 
uh, when beta is very large, we have the black hole solution. And we are asking whether there is a, an interpolating solution. What, what do we mean by interpolating solution? So that would be a classical solution of string theory, string field theory, and is simply described by a 2D CFT. So it's a world sheet CFT uh, with central charge C hat equal to four. Um, and uh, in addition, we have another well sheet CFT describing the internal dimension. So we're not we're going to keep this fixed, uh, and we're going to concentrate the discussion on this uh, CFT that has a central charge C4. And that CFT should have one uh, parameter, one marginal deformation, uh, which should correspond to beta. So this is what we're looking for. Now, it turns out that you can make an argument that no such thing exists, so you cannot go continuously between the two in the type 2 case. And this is done by uh, considering a quantity that is invariant under uh, marginal deformations. And that quantity is just one the, the simplest quantity of this kind, which is the Witten index of the 1,1 supersymmetric Walsh and CFT. So that the target space theory is uh, configuration is not supersymmetric, but as usual in the super string theory, the Walsh uh, string theory, it is indeed supersymmetric. And so you can use that uh, Walsh supersymmetry to define the uh, Witten index and argue that it is invariant under the formations. So the Witten index, I remind you, is uh, defined in terms of a trace of minus one to the fermion number uh, times e to the minus beta tilde h. So h is the Walsh Hamiltonian, and beta tilde is some parameter completely unrelated to the parameter beta we were discussing before. And this, config, this uh, object, uh, it's invariant under the formations is actually independent of beta tilde and receives configurations only from the zero energy states of this theory, only from the what we normally call Ramon Ramon ground states of the theory. <clears throat> now, on the Horowitz Polchinski side, uh, we actually find, well, maybe I should make first a preliminary remark. So, if the theory has a completely geometric description, so if the Welsh theory, uh, has a geometric target space, is a sigma model, then uh, this with an index is equal uh, to the Euler characteristic of the target space. So it's the sum of the number of harmonic zero forms minus the number of harmonic one forms plus the number of harmonic two forms, etc. cetera. Um, and so on the horowitz polchinski side, we can go to, um, to the region where the, the, the tachyon, the binding mode is very small. And so we are essentially considering a flat space target space of the form S1 times S3, whose Euler characteristic is zero, so we get zero. On the black hole side, the Euler characteristic is two, and so we get the, that the index is two. Okay, And we can calculate the indices in some extreme regions where either the, the, the winding mode is very small, or in the black hole side when the black hole is very, very large, that we can use the geometric description. Okay, so since they are different, uh, there cannot be a continuous connection uh, between the two. So, sorry, so, Juan, uh, sorry to interrupt, excuse me. Yeah, no Maybe you'll explain this, but how do you do the calculation on the black hole side? That is, what is the target space in that case? Uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the target space is the black hole uh, manifold, right? The Euclidean black hole. So the cigar, did you mean the cigar there? Or, or? Yeah, yeah, it's the, well, it's the whole target space of the four dimensional black hole. It's the cigar times the sphere. Okay. You know, just, the, just the standard Schwarzschild solution. So it's just the ordinary Schwarzschild solution in Euclidean space. I see. Um, so even though the CFT is presumably not exactly known, you, you can you just do the calculation on that target space. Is it? Is that yeah? Right? Yeah, it, it, it's it's known. Yeah, it's known for large radius, and, and we don't have to know too much. I mean, we we only had have, have to know that for large radius, it reduces to a nonlinear sigma model, and okay. then you have to use what uh, Edward already described in his paper on the index. That is that for any nonlinear sigma model, the the index is equal to the Euler characteristic of the target space. So, so you don't have to do any calculation. So just uh, okay. Thank you. notice in that. So, the, so the, what is, is the Euler characteristic? I, I should of emphasize black hole. What? Sorry again. Well, what is the Euler characteristic of a black hole background? I mean, two. It's two. Why is that? So, um, okay. So one definition of the Euler characteristic is what I just said that the sum of sum of uh, normalizable uh, zero forms, two forms, and so on, right? 
Yeah, um, that is correct. But from the geometric point of view? Yeah, so from the geometric point of view, you find that uh, where there are no normalizable zero forms, so that would be, uh, and but there are normalizable two forms. So one of them is a two form on the sphere, and the other one is a two form on the cigar. Um, they are the two forms that are excited when you consider a, either a magnetic or electric black hole. Um, so uh, the Euler characteristic is defined in terms of the difference in the number of edges. Uh, uh, surfaces and that sort of thing. From that sort of point of view, how does it come up? Yeah, yeah. So you can do it with those triangulations, but since this is yeah. a smooth manifold, there is also yeah. it can also be described in terms of the harmonic forms that you have in your manifold. So that definition with the, the edges and so on, uh, in the case of uh, smooth manifolds, becomes uh, equivalent to counting the harmonic forms. But how do you triangulate a black hole? I mean, uh, how, what is the normal? This is a Euclidean of... black hole. Well, you would need to triangulate as you triangulate any any manifold, right? So you take very tiny little triangles and you could do that. I mean, that's a complicated way to do it. I mean, the, it's a. Uh, but uh, we already know from mathematics that that definition is equivalent to counting the harmonic forms. So we just count the harmonic forms. So if you triangulate the horizon, for instance. If you triangulate the horizon, it will be a sphere, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Euler characteristic of a sphere is what? Um, well, the... Um, That's zero, I guess. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, it's not zero. It's uh, either no, one or two. I don't remember the normalization. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, can I ask yeah, a two. slightly... The only characteristic of the sphere is two, but that's two. not the yeah. calculation. Yeah, 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 that's... Uh, uh, but if one, can I ask a slightly different question? Uh, the, um, uh, the, the, I mean, uh, you you are looking for a, a CFT deformation uh, between these two solutions, but isn't it the case that any interpolating uh, solution, the winding condensate changes, uh, the, the value of the winding condensate depends on the string coupling, doesn't it? As you, so isn't isn't the deformation going to be something which is beyond the CFT deformation because no, no so so the, the we, we take the limit when the string coupling is very very small right yes and that's so fine. The, the, the string the, the string coupling does not appear so in the horowitz Wachinsky solution the string coupling does not appear it only appears as an overall constant in the action yes and the winding condensate chi depends only on beta right only on the temperature right uh, but um, in the black hole solution, I thought there's a isn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't one have to no, no even yeah, the... no the winding condensate. Well, it, it it depends on how you normalize it, right? So if you normalize it as uh, as the fields that appear in the classical action, okay. Let me, uh, let me go back. So so here um, I I didn't have a g string, so there is uh, there they are a further one, right? But that's when chi is normalized uh, as, uh, let me see. So here we're normalizing everything so that we have a one over g squared in front of everything, right? I think what you are thinking about is the canonically normalized field where uh, there would be a one here, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But in order to compare, so when, when, we, when I said that the, in the horowitz kolchinsky solution, g scales out, is that's when you uh, write the action in this way. So then this g completely disappears. And uh, you only uh, find that chi and the metric and so on only depend on beta. Okay, I see. So there's nothing in the solution in an interpolating solution which would depend on the coupling. I mean, which no, would no. coupling no. constant. Yeah, okay. no, naively, naively not. I mean, we have not found it, but uh, okay, thanks. But but somehow this this index stuff is saying that. Uh, Maybe the coupling should be relevant at this point, perhaps. So the simplest assumption, well, one one conjecture you might have about this is that um, when you approach this point, maybe stringy corrections become important at this point. Maybe, at, but only at this point. So there might be some higher order transition and so on. Hmm. Uh, so the classical approximation breaks down here. Okay. So one that that was. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, so that was what my question was going to be. That uh, do you, yeah. 
how, why do we expect, what are the reasons to expect that there is a classical solution of string theory that will interpolate between HP and the black hole? Well, the, 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 the reason is that um, the, the, on the two sides, we have the same symmetries, right? And maybe there is one. I, I, don't, I don't know. There is no particular reason to expect it, but it would have been a, a simple, it, it sounds like a simple conjecture. Uh, because uh, I would have expected that uh, something very non perturbative in the string coupling is needed to really uh, do physics at that point, uh, because you're working at the string length. Well, scale. yes, but the, but the string length is, uh, is yeah, the, the fact that you're at the string length does not mean that it should be non perturbative in the coupling, right? That only means it's non perturbative in alpha prime, right? Yes, but that's true. Could have been, yeah, so. But in any case, I think uh, your intuition was right for this case of the type two, uh, type two case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, on the other hand, for the, this heterotic case, it sounds like uh, maybe it's the other way around. So that's a bit surprising. So here you can also compute the index and it's equal on both, both sides. It's equal to zero on both sides. Another known invariants are also the same. And there is actually linear sigma model analysis, which suggests that they are continuously connected. And I'm going to now describe, uh, let's see how am I doing with time? Well, i perhaps quickly describe this linear sigma model discussion. Um, so here, the idea is that you construct the well sheet CFT as the infrared limit of a simpler problem involving free fields plus a potential. So you, act with, you start with an action uh, involving free fields. We, we, actually, we will actually include, uh, instead of four dimensions, five dimensions. Um, and then uh, we'll introduce a certain supersymmetric coupling, which will involve a left moving uh, fermion superfield and uh, some function w, which we take to be a, a quartic function of this, uh, this simple form. If you integrate out here the auxiliary fields, you find that you get the free, the free action plus a potential proportional to this W squared. So in order to find the minimum of the potential, uh, you set W equal to zero, and then you can solve for X and you find that, so Y describes uh, three spatial dimensions and X is a circle that whose size varies on this extra dimension. So the manifold W equal to zero is a four dimensional manifold, uh, which has uh, a topology, which depending on the, on, the sign, on the signs of this combination of constants could be the horowitz polchinski topology or the black hole topology. So when in this uh, first case, when Y is zero, uh, this whole thing is positive. So then the circle has not shrunk to zero at the origin. While in this case, we cannot go all the way to zero. So Y has some minimum value where the circle shrinks completely to zero and that would be analogous to the horizon of the black hole. So here we have these two, two topologies and the idea is that as we vary the parameters, the classical vacuum manifold is either similar to one or the other. So the, the philosophy here is that we start in the UV with three fields plus some potential. Uh, at some intermediate stage in the renormalization group flow, we go to a classical vacuum manifold given by W equal to zero and that four dimensional space is, does not obey Einstein's equations. So in principle, it should uh, flow to a CFT. The metric should be adjusted and we do not analyze this in detail, but that in the infrared should give you some, some CFT. So, sorry, um, sorry, Juan, I, I didn't follow that. So the idea is that the four dimensional split, I mean, so you had uh, five coordinates with this one condition yeah. and is mm -hmm. that supposed to, and then the cigar has two dimensions. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Uh, what does this guy? Yeah, so we, 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 no, we, we are discussing a, right now. We're discussing a black hole in four dimensions, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's our target. We want to describe. We want to describe a four-dimensional CFT with the C hat equal to four, right? So central charge four. I see. And um, is the I see. Sorry. And is W equal to zero? Then the four-dimensional locus that will describe uh, the four-dimensional. Yes. Locus. Yes. Yes. So W equal to zero is some four-dimensional manifold. Yeah. That is not yet Ricci flat. So it's not a Ricci flat manifold. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 it, it, it's not quite. It's a some sigma model. Uh, so you you'll find that this at this stage describes a, a sigma model which is classically conformal invariant. But once you consider the quantum the Walshit correction the alpha prime corrections. 
okay. it will not uh, be uh, conformal invariant and it should flow to some CFD. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you. So that's uh, the philosophy here. So that maybe you will flow to some CFD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the philosophy of this linear sigma model construction. So they were used in the past to describe string backgrounds. They were in general used uh, with a little more supersymmetry, but well should supersymmetry. But here we're using it with this amount of supersymmetry. Mm -hmm. Now in, in, the, in this UV theory, we had three parameters, this A, B, and C. But in the infrared theory, we expect only just one marginal parameter. Uh, we also expect one relevant parameter, and that's related to that negative mode we discussed a moment ago, that uh, both the holes, Polchinski, and the black hole have a negative mode as uh, Euclidean solutions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and because of that, we expect that one of these parameters should be fine-tuned in order to get to the CFT. And we are left with one parameter, and so we conjecture that this parameter might become irrelevant under this flow, but we did not check this explicitly. Um, what, so, what what, yeah, please. Beta is uh, exactly marginal. You want to exp you yeah. would like this to be exactly marginal, right? Yes, case. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and how explicitly is the CFT known? The fixed point. Uh, not not explicitly at all. Yeah. Okay. So so it's uh, the the abstract definition is what we just said and. There are things that could go wrong in this abstract definition that maybe maybe all the parameters end up being relevant and there is actually no no solution and so on. So there is no. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so okay, um, so the, the one interesting point about this linear sigma model discussion is that nothing special happens when b minus c over a is equal to zero. So there is like no new branch appearing here. So uh, in, in other situations when there is some singularity, there is perhaps a new branch of vacuum appearing there, but here that's not happening. So that would lead us to think that perhaps the flow to the infrared theory would not show any surprise, but this is no complete guarantee as uh, we were just saying, when you flow to the infrared, it might be that the two theories that start very close in the UV, they become very different in the infrared. So Sorry, wh wh why do you need, need it to flow to the infrared? I, I didn't get that. Yeah, so we need it to flow to the infrared because uh, the uh, at the level of just uh, going to the surface where W is equal to zero, that four dimensional manifold uh, does not define a conformal field theory. So it's, um, it's, um, it's classically conformal, but when, due to quantum corrections is not conformal. So we expect that the theory should will continue to flow as we go to the infrared. But that's still a conjecture. Uh, well, it's not a conjecture that it will flow. So the, the, the conjecture is that the flow has uh, this, these properties. And uh, wh what would go wrong uh, if it was uh, uh, a regular? I mean, this were a, this was a sort of a heterotic linear sigma model. Uh, where would the argument break down if, in the other case? If you sort yeah, of let me give you an example of uh, an argument that might break down. Just to, to give you the example, I'm going to uh, to set y. We're going to remove y from the discussion, right? Let's say there is no y. And there is only x, right? So the, the, the infrared theory at this level is very simple. It's just the theory on a circle, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, and so naively you would think that for any value of b that uh, you have this theory on a circle, right? But yeah. if the radius of the circle is, uh, but however, because this started out as being a disk, uh, in principle, we should consider sort of uh, well sheet instantons that. Uh, wrap the disk and end on this circle, roughly speaking. So in other words, we get the circle, but we have to be, make sure that the winding mode is a relevant operator or an irrelevant operator. So when uh, when the circle size becomes very small, we undergo this costal list stowless transition and, uh, and the theory becomes massive if, if the size of the circle is small enough. So that's an example of uh, something that uh, would go wrong, let's say, or that, that that's one way in which uh, the, so the, 
in, in this particular example, we see that as a function of B, you have a perfectly, perfectly fine infrared CFT up to some value of B, but beyond the value of B, you, you get the massive theory. Right, uh, but couldn't you have considered a non-chiral version of with the same superpotential? Uh, yes, yes, I'm going to go that uh, in the next slide. So okay. that's for that would be like the type two uh, situation. Yes. Yeah, so yes. you're going to say that there it will not the argument. Will yeah, break. there the difference is that when you consider the non-chiral version, in order to have the same construction, you need to introduce an extra bosonic field P. Okay. And then, uh, so you can have vacua where W is zero and P is zero, and we have the same story as before. Um, but now, uh, when this is zero, uh, there is a new classical branch that appears when X and Y are zero and P can be non-zero, okay? Um, so that seems to be related to the singularity. Um, but the, the actual story is a little more complicated. Um, because uh, on this classical branch, actually a superpotential is generated. Um, and depending on the sign of uh, B minus CA, we either uh, do or do not have additional uh, massive vacua. Uh, but what this... guarantees the flow to the IR? The, I mean, the, the, that the flow to the IR is a CFT. What guarantees that? Um, well, um in principle nothing so uh you you uh, we 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 are we, we are assuming that uh these theories uh will flow to some infrared cft it might it might happen that they flow to a massive theory or they the space somehow disappears and so it, it's not guaranteed that you will flow to a cft okay yeah um so one. So, um, so, but, but let me see. So, far, very, very far away in the space, you you do, you do float. I mean, the CFT is just flat space, right? So you have that, and so if it fails, it might fail because uh, in the flow you generate some structure that starts growing, uh, and that's related to this. So we, we expect that that generically will happen for generically but generic generic values of the parameter, and that's related to this negative mode that uh, we were just discussing. So you will need to fine tune at least one parameter. To, to make sure okay. that it doesn't happen. Yeah. But it, it could be that when you get very close to the string scale, you may need to fine tune more parameters, and maybe this theory doesn't have enough parameters, and you don't flow to it. So that, that could conceivably happen. So, sorry, Juan, we, we, the, the only thing we have really uh, solidly established is that it cannot happen that they two are continuously connected Okay, in, in the type two case. Uh, and this linear sigma model discussion is helpful for understanding what what could go wrong, why why they are not connected, and so on. Somehow, in in, in a previous that you have a common saying at least this connectedness in type two may have some uh, Hagedorn transition. Um, could you elaborate it, Peter? Um. Um, uh, could you say again which comment? I mean, in, in a previous that uh, somehow, I, yeah. I, if I if I didn't uh, 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 understand uh, uh, you said that in the the, the dis disconnectness in type two, uh, somehow may, maybe one pos one possible explanation is like a, a hug down transition. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say a higher on transition. I, I'll, I'll have another transparency where I say a little bit more about this. And uh, then if, if there's still a question, you can ask me again. Okay, so yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, so this, this transparency is a little more technical and maybe I might uh, perhaps skip it. But I might just say, it. yeah, let me just skip it. Um, let me just mention that this fact that the indices are different and the type two is related to the fact that there are some D brains that exist on the HP side, but not on the black hole side. And so, for example, if you have a D brain localized at the origin and wrapping the time circle, uh, and then that D brain exists on the HP side as a D brain. Uh, on the other hand, on the black hole, if you have a, a D zero brain that wraps in the in the time Euclidean time direction, you can shrink it to at the horizon to zero. Of course. Uh, 
the brains generate some fluxes at infinity and in the on the black hole the flux that same flux is carried by an electrically charged black hole so by some flux on top of the black hole solution and that's related to this extra ramon ramon ground states that we discussed before uh, okay so um now you can you can ask what is this transition in this type two so it might be some first order transition but i think uh perhaps a it's perhaps a little more reasonable to think that it might be a higher order transition uh, and you can wonder what what happens so in some other case uh, what happens is that in, in there is some region in the target space where the dilaton blows up and then one should include uh, higher loops we don't know what, where that's what happens here and, um, and, and if you try to make a guess on what this uh, linear dilaton theory should be it's, it's there isn't a, a reasonable guess uh, something that looked reasonable to us. Now, one other comment is that if we were to embed this into a gauge uh, string duality, maybe it could be related to a phase transition of the holonomy. So there was a paper, well, I didn't cite here, by Aharoni, uh, Minwala, um, Raju, and uh, I think um, Papadodimas, I think, um, and, um, and Van Brunstonk. Um, and the so you could you could uh, make so the holonomy is a matrix, uh, an n by n unitary matrix, and so you can diagonalize it and then find the eigenvalue density. So here I'm plotting the possible eigenvalue densities. The horizontal line is uh, theta, um, so the, the eigenvalue of the unitary matrix, and the vertical side is the density of eigenvalue. So we can have a situation where we have a continuous function, or uh, we could develop a gap. And so this is the gross uh, Witten value transition for this type of unitary matrices. And it was actually, in fact, conjecturing this paper that perhaps this black hole, this precisely this transition we're talking about, might be uh, related to uh, the transition of this type. Okay, so it might be that uh, this is uh, related to, to this type of transition we're talking about. Um, so, and this looks uh, very reasonable. Um, and I'm about this. I'm confused only about one point, uh, which is about the webs of Wilson loops. Um, but maybe I won't discuss that in detail. So, um, well, maybe I'll discuss it. So here, so if you have a Wilson loop that uh, winds n times, that's related to the nth uh, Fourier transform of these distributions. And here you have an analytic function. So the Fourier transforms will uh, decrease exponentially with n, where n is the uh, Fourier frequency. While here, you would expect them to decrease uh, like some power. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the strings, uh, at st uh, strings that wind in strings uh, on both backgrounds, it naively, at least naively to me, it seems like uh, they both decrease in this way. But maybe I might be missing something. So uh, actually, the pic this picture looks very attractive. So it would be nice if it is true. So, um, okay, so um, now I'm sorry, going sorry. to discuss. Sorry, what? Yes, Do you please. say e to the power minus n because a string winding two times is twice the area? Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. But now, now there is the issue of whether that's some infinity you should either cut off or not cut off, so we could get into a discussion like that. So, and maybe a singularity at the center, at like the center of the cigar. Uh, yeah, I think naively there isn't a singularity. I mean, there, there, the string Walsh it can have a mapping, which, uh, you know, with some branch cut there, and it's uh, perfectly fine as a okay. string back. Uh, yeah. And what happens now, when the you, gap you, you, develops? Uh, well, the, this transition is understood in detail in the matrix model, right? So, yeah. so there you can write simple matrix models as uh, these people have done. And you can understand this transition in the matrix model. Now, in the quant full quantum field theory, uh, in principle, it's hard to derive what is the effective matrix model for this holonomy. So you can perhaps find it, uh, and it was discussed that weak coupling. And so, but to connect it with the transition we are seeing here, we would need to calculate that uh, matrix model at the uh, stronger values of the coupling, of the Toft coupling. And so, it's in general difficult. So we, we don't really know what that matrix model is, but regardless of what it is, you could still conjecture that perhaps there is a transition of this kind. 
And this is uh, what uh, these people have explored. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss uh, some uh, curiosity about this uh, classical about classical string solutions, and that is the fact that the uh, action, the on shell action, is uh, given by a pure boundary term. So it's a total derivative, and uh, it's given purely by a boundary term. Um, so in other words, uh, you just simply have to evaluate the term that involves the extrinsic curvature and some derivative of the telephone. And this is true for uh, sort of classical uh, solutions of string theory. And this you can argue uh, to all orders in alpha prime, and it's due to the overall e to the minus phi dependence uh, of the action on the dilaton. And since it's true to all orders in alpha prime, it is quite likely that it's true exactly in alpha prime. But, uh, this, I don't know an argument for that. I mean, of course, uh, it's well known that the uh, if, if you try to evaluate the action naively, you get zero. And that's probably related to this fact. Um, so that implies that the action can be purely expressed in terms of quantities that are defined far away. So for example, the dilaton far away with decay like one over R to some power and the, the metric similarly. So in terms of the mass and this constant for the dilaton, you can write down uh, the action. Now you might say this is trivial, of course, uh, for, it's true for the gravity for the Einstein gravity. Um, and you can say that's a special case of this. But uh, it's not true for Einstein gravity plus some higher derivative corrections. For example, in 11 dimensional supergravity, uh, this, this property is not true. So anyway. Um, and uh, it's also true if you include the Ramon Ramon fields. Um, yeah. um, now, um, we discussed so far neutral black holes, but uh, if the internal theory has a circle, then you can have some black holes which carry momentum and fundamental string binding charges on the extra circle. And these solutions can be obtained from a solution generating transformation, uh, which is a symmetry of gravity. And that's how uh, these solutions were obtained in the past. But not only is this transformation a symmetry of gravity, but it's also a symmetry of the Walshit CFT. Um, and so that means that if you have the uh, CFT, which is the seed solution, you can also have a CFT for the charge solution. And so, uh, and the thermodynamics of the uncharged solution determines the thermodynamics of the charge solution. So, and because of the property we discussed in the previous transparency, we only need to know the asymptotic form of the uncharged solution to figure out uh, the properties of these uh, charge solutions and to apply this solution uh, generating transformation. So uh, all the statements that uh, we made here are statements that are valid to all orders in alpha prime. And just to, to tell you that we are saying something non-trivial, the transformations are actually different in the type two and the heterotic string. So these transformations that are actually symmetries of the Walshit CFT are actually different in the uh, type two and uh, string theory case. They, they differ by things which you could say are alpha prime corrections. So you can apply uh, the symmetries both to the HP and black hole solutions. So in particular, you get a charged version of the HP solution. Um, and the, you can get the entropies of this charged version of the HP solution. And of course, they agree with the entropies of, uh, of strings that are near extremality and so on. Um, so in particular, uh, something that happens is that for this type of black hole, so these are, these are black holes, which if you only apply the classical approximation, when you take their extremal limit, the, the size of the horizon goes to zero and the entropy is naively zero at extremality or very close to extremality. Um, however, uh, when you look at uh, the seed solution from which they came, you find that uh, that seed solution was uh, in this near extremal limit was a very small, uh, black hole, and uh, then you would expect it to undergo this transition as we approach extremality. We expect to undergo the transition from the black hole to the HP solution and eventually also to the free string uh, solution. And so it, it had been noted a long time ago by Ashok Sen that if you take um, these black holes and you 
set the radius of the horizon to be of order one, then the entropy qualitatively agrees with the entropy of a highly excited uh, BPS string. Um, and what I'm saying here, what, what we are saying here is that that agreement is the same as the agreement noted for uh, for Euclidean black holes, for, for, for uncharged black holes by uh, Horowitz and Polchinski uh, well, and some other people before that. So uh, at that, the agreement at the string scale for these black holes. Um, um, OK, very good. Um, now, the um, one small point here is that this HP solution looks a bit like a fastball, some configuration where the microstates are very clear. And so this is, you can view this as a fa fastball for any extremal configuration. So it's not, it's not a black hole. It makes a transition to this other configuration, which uh, is like this, similar to what we were calling a string star, so this HP solution. So in conclusions, we discussed the possible connection between the black hole and the self-gravitating string solution of uh, Horowitz and Polchinski. And for type two case, we show that the two cannot be continuous to connect the classical solutions. For the heterotic case, it seems that they could be continuously connected, but we, we didn't really prove it. So we just presented some evidence. Uh, we also discussed how to generate the charge solutions and the, this uh, transition, this HPC transition is relevant when we approach extremality for those uh, black holes. So there are many questions for the future. So can we say more about the CFT at intermediate values of beta? Um, I think this point was clear in the questions you were asking me. And can we track the picture of the microstates uh, through this intermediate region? That's another question. And one, one question is, why is the heterotic and type two picture different? I mean, I. I would have expected that the two should be either the two are connected or the two are not continuously connected, but why should they why should they be different? Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Juan, for the very interesting talk. So um, are there any questions? Yeah, so I have a question. Uh, for the heterotic case, did you consider I, I missed that? Did you consider the Vitanic decks? Yes, the Witten index is zero on both sides. So let me just try okay. to explain why it is zero. What? Yeah. Yeah, why so is it zero? It's zero. Yeah, it's zero because the, the Witten index uh, counts the number of uh, Ramon ground states. So it's not Ramon Ramon in this case, it's just Ramon. And um, these are given by uh, spinners, right? So you're supposed to count the possible positive or negative helicity spinners you can have in the manifold. And because these manifolds have some parity symmetries, the this positive or negative helicity, the number of these positive or negative helicity spinners are chirality, sorry, not helicity, chirality, chirality spinners are, are actually the same. Oh. So that's uh, that's the computation. Yeah. So one possibly vague question. Suppose, suppose yeah. we were in ADS3. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so now we've got these two solutions where, uh, so we're putting the ADS3 on a, uh, the boundary is a T2, the boundary CFT yeah, is on yeah. a two torus. Mm -hmm. And the black hole solution is one where the time circle shrinks. The mm -hmm. HP solution will be one where the, where the space circle shrinks. Exactly, and yeah, yeah. Now there's, in this case, there's this strange um, singular solution in the middle where both shrink. You know, just take B, uh, Poincare patch ADS and identify yeah. two circles. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. whether this could be the singularity that you have to go through in order to go from one to two. Um, uh, I don't know. So um, I think, uh, well, Perhaps one would need to understand a little bit better what the analog of the HP solution in ADS3 is. Uh, and, uh, but presumably, at I, least if we couple, I mean, presumably it would sort of exist or not. Um, yeah, it, it is possible. That I, it's quite likely that it exists. Um, and. Uh, so I, I don't know whether you are driven to this uh, particular M equal to zero BTC black hole that you're talking about. So 
Um, right. Maybe maybe you are. I don't know. This there's some sense in which this is a singular CFD, right? Yeah, yeah, that's probably a singular CFD. Okay, thanks. Yeah. One sorry, your basic question. So given that this HP and black hole solutions are actually solutions of uh, you know uh, supergravity, why is it that the sigma model on them is not conformal? I mean, why do you have a flow? More? It is. It is. So it is conformal. So, so for very large radius, right? The black hole is a good solution. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me let me perhaps. Uh, uh, so the black hole is a good solution at large radius, but so when we're talking about this. Uh, these flows, right? Yes. Uh, imagine that we want to be a large radius. So we take beta to be large and all these numbers to be large, right? Yeah. So that we are at very large radius. Now, what happens in this situation is that um, at the, when we impose w equal to zero, we get some 4D manifold, but it's not the black hole. So it's not the, exactly the black hole manifold. It has a different metric. Mm -hmm. So what's supposed to happen is that as we turn on the quantum corrections, that manifold, which is not the black hole, will have its metric adjusted. And, and due to this flow, it will, uh, will go to the standard Schwarzschild solution. That's what should happen at large radius. And in principle, one could try to verify more explicitly this at large radius. So it's uh, in principle dual calculation. It's, you will have to fine tune one parameter at least. So uh, because of this negative mode we were talking about. I see. And the same is true for the HP side also. Yeah, the same is true in the other case. So in the other case, for example, at the, at this level that you are, we are discussing this, uh, there is no winding condensate. Right? So the, the winding condensate would come from uh, well shift instant on corrections to these pictures. Oh, I see. Thank you. So how Correct. would you connect all this with say the entropy of the say the Schwarzschild black hole um, well these are these are all classical solutions which uh, which have have their entropy so they have uh, some entropy Sorry. so the Schwarzschild solution has this is a solution of the heterotic string theory yes yes for when the radius is large it is a solution So, so, sorry, Juan, uh, yeah. you said something and uh, a quick uh, reading of the paper said, thought, I thought you were saying there, but I'm not sure. Uh, did you say yeah. that in the type two side, uh, there, there are some D brains which get massless at this transition point? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And, that's right. Then I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. I mean, could that, could it be that if you incorporate them in some way, you can go past the transition? Uh, if Maybe. Are... So normally, normally, yeah, indeed. So, so here, for example, you have a D zero brain, right? That uh, mm -hmm. it's um, it, it exists on the H HP side and it wraps the time circle, right? Mm -hmm. But as we were saying before, the time circle is becoming smaller at the center of the solution, right? Mm -hmm. The Euclidean time circle becomes smaller. And so this D brain uh, naively might uh, become lighter, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as, as, as you go uh, to, uh, as, you approach, uh, as, as you approach this point, uh, maybe you, you, it's natural to conjecture that it becomes massless, as you say. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure, but it some, sounds reasonable because it, it doesn't exist on this side. So um, mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. one way in which uh, maybe it goes unstable in some other way. But, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so in other circumstances, when you have a situation where some brain becomes massless, um, yeah, you might have some low energy theory where you include the D-brain as a field. And that, that's what you were discussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that would be a very low energy uh, description, and maybe it's useful for for understanding some aspects of this transition. I, I I'm not sure, but something that happens in other cases is that at that particular point, the string perturbation theory does not work, or at least just classical string theory does not work. Uh, you have to in include some error corrections. I mean, or we're not hired, but you have to treat it non-perturbatively. Um, 
Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to include this extra massless field or light field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know whether there is a description like that that could tell us uh, something more what's going on, what's going on here. But one one reason for well, one reason this discussion is a little complicated is that if you think that we are going to have some description at uh, low energy in the spatial directions, right? Mm -hmm. Then there is the annoying fact that there is this negative mode, right? Yeah. And so the problem is not quite uh, well defined. I mean, you, it's not as well defined as in other situations where uh, yeah. brains become light. So, in other words, if we want to include uh, quantum effects and so on, we have to worry about the fact that there is a negative mode. If, if we were happy with just classical solutions, classical mm -hmm. string theory, we can ignore the negative mode. But um, so that's a difficulty for trying to uh, find a description of the, of the kind you were. I see. The, the negative mode on the black hole side is tied to the negative specific heat, if, if I understand. It. Yes, no? yes, 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 mm. yes, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a mode where the black hole would become bigger, right? And then mm. it would hit all of space, for example, or become smaller and then shrink to nothing. Yeah. And if you if we could do this in ADS space on the black hole side, would we get rid of that negative mode or? Just to ask. Um, well, I think this transition will involve small black holes. Small what's black normally holes, called small yeah. black holes in ADS, and yeah. you you will have a similar issue, especially when you go to this uh, classical lemma. Yeah, uh, but maybe so not in ADS. There, there, there might be there, there might be a setup where you don't have this problem. I, but I don't know. It's, maybe there is yeah. one. Yeah. Sorry, go on. in ADS three, the black hole that would be involved would not be negative specific heat. I see. Um, that's the large size black hole. Yeah, ask. yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe ADS three is a better. Yeah, might be a good good place there's, to. Yeah, there's no small black hole in ADS. It's just all. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's more promising to to think about it this in ADS. We 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 really haven't thought about it. Um, uh, so so heterotic string uh, theory would involve many. Uh, other charges apart from the Q and the M that you are considering, right? I mean, how, do you set them to zero here or what do you do with those? Um, are, are you asking about the charge black holes? Yeah, so for heterotic string theory, you have those charged black holes, right? Um, yeah, that's right. So, um, the, the, yeah, the, the, the theory has some, some duality symmetries and the all the various charges are somehow dual to just this momentum and winding charges on the on this extra circle. So they're they're not. I don't think they are different to the other solutions. So we can treat all all the other all the other charges that involve momentum and winding on all possible circles or po all possible internal circles is the same story. Now there are other charges like, for example, an S five ring charge and so on. Those uh, we cannot include using this method. So. I mean, those of course can be included at the level of gravity by doing uh, symmetries of gravity, but those are do not lead to symmetries in the Walshit CFT. So that's why if we want to make statements that include alpha prime corrections and so on, as we are discussing here, we are limited to black holes, or we're, we're limited to charges that are momentum and fundamental string winding charges. In, in other words, we, we can generate more solutions in gravity than we can in uh, string theory, in the full string theory. Uh, Juan, can I ask a question? Yeah. So the sign of this interaction uh, between the winding modes, it was important that uh, you know it was attractive. So the yes, 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 very important. Term, uh, so now, um, in a mode, uh, so of course, if it is mediated only by gravity, then uh, that is sort of expected, of course. But mm -hmm. let us say you have more general situations like, um, you know, moduli fields or Ramon Ramon yeah. fields and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the um, so then it may not be attractive. So in in that case, presumably, uh, you know, you wouldn't have a condensation of the string gas. To a, uh, to a black hole. Uh, is that oh, um, a generic thing that you can see that 
the string gas would always condense to a black hole or i mean in the in the in the heterotic uh, case where yeah 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 hard. so so well um I think for this case of the string gas, the 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 only relevant force is the size that the one the modulus is the one that is the size of the circle and the dilaton, and those both of them are attractive. Um, so I see. Now, um, I, I think I think your 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 question is a little more general, and yeah. perhaps I should say uh, a little more about this. So we concentrated on the case d equal to four, and. Uh, in fact, in, in higher dimensions, the, there isn't a horowitz koshinsky solution. So in dimensions six or bigger, uh, there isn't a solution. So you can't uh, easily, you, the, the force either, the gravitational force, either you can neglect it completely, or if you include it, it's so strong that it uh, pulls everything to the center and you, you can't have a stable solution. It's somehow related to the fact that you can have stable planetary orbits in high dimensions, let's say. And the same happens with the strings. And, um, so this is somehow the most uh, favorable situation. Um, now, what does this say about uh, the transition transition in general? Well, the, the idea that the black hole will, when it's evaporating and it gets to be string size, that it will turn to a gas of strings. I think that could be true in any number of dimensions. But um, it would be a dynamical process, a time-dependent process, and uh, would have to be treated using uh, sort of Lorentzian uh, string theory. Uh, now, the, what I said before about the that the solution not the, so what, what we treated in this this case are solutions which exist in thermal equilibrium, and so having a configuration existing in thermal equilibrium is something a little more uh, special, and yeah. you, know, you, you do not always have uh, things existing in thermal equilibrium with you know, no finite mass and so on. So it's something we're lucky that, well, it's a lucky accident that it exists in four dimensions. And so you can view this as a simpler case where you can make this whole discussion about the transition in thermal equilibrium, sort of uh, where you can have the transition occurring uh, within the thermal ensemble. Uh, but in principle, the, the transition is a more dynamical uh, process. Okay. Sorry, sir. I mean, this is true even, I mean, th th this fact that, uh, for example, an ordinary star, right? That's, or, you know, say, you, you could say a gas, so supposed to have a gas of non relativistic particles and at a finite temperature, right? Right. Uh, just that. So, um, of course, a star, you might say something like this, uh, at least uh, if you can neglect interactions. And, but if you really want to find the solution at thermal equilibrium, an honest solution, you actually don't find one. You find the mass would be infinite and so on. But you know, it, it, it's close. I mean, the actual configuration is pretty close. To, you can so so, so th 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 does this mean that it's obvious that there's no one parameter set of solutions in six and higher dimensions going between sort of the thermal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, yeah. So what what what? I don't know exactly what happens. It, it seems plausible that there is some kind of uh, first order transition. So you can go from the free string, the free string can be very massive and so on. Um, okay. But you have another branch of solutions, which would be the black hole with a gas of strings around it. And as you approach the higher than temperature, this gas of strings becomes uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, so but in the heterotic, the arguments you gave in the het heterotic theory for the existence of this, Sort of one parameter. Can you see something special happening in d greater than six? Yes, yes, yes. So at the level of those arguments, no. So at the level of the arguments we were just discussing, uh, th those arguments could be uh, presented in any number of dimensions. So what, that's one defect of that discussion. And so the fact that the solution doesn't exist and so on is something that would occur at, that you would only see uh, once you uh, once you go to this step here. Okay. Okay. So I mean that 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 in fact shows that the that, that step is not trivial. So it, uh, depending on the dimensions, we would expect different properties. So the superpotential that you devised to get the potential finally after integrating out the fermionic thetas, does you, do you have that form at hand, or are you conjecturing that some superpotential will lead to that sort of potential? 
Um, so here we start, uh, th this is the analog of a super potential here. Yeah, and yeah. It has this form. And then the potential is just the square of that, that super potential. That's just yeah. classical. What I'm saying is, do you have, are you, do you have a form for the lambda minus? Or are you just conjecturing? Uh, yeah, lambda clear? minus is a, is a fermionic, uh, fermionic superfield that whose true. physical components are just purely a left moving fermion and no other partner. And that fermion, uh, when we, uh, so that fermion actually around this vacuum uh, becomes massive and it pairs up with the right moving fermion that corresponds to the direction orthogonal to the surface, W equal to zero. No, what I'm concerned <laughs> with is where is the dip theta dependence in the lambda minus and the Ws? Um, so, so this, so here I've been uh, sl slightly sloppy, so the, Lambda minus has a theta expansion. It has uh, the left moving fermion and then an auxiliary field. And all these axes uh, also have some expansion, right? So it has, um, they have the bosonic, uh, the bosonic coordinate and then also uh, fermion, uh, physical fermion. So, yeah, um, so, so the question is whether this lambda minus W what form does that lambda minus w take in order to give you that final w? Ah, so he, here, here, what it says is, is this is lambda minus is some field times w of x and y, and w of x and y is this function. I, I, I've been slightly sloppy here because I denoted with the same letter the bosonic, the bosonic field and the super field. So here, maybe I should have used here a slightly different letter. X is really a super field, and y is also super field. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Juan, about this earlier discussion on ADS3, uh, 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 I mean, uh, Lawrence Eberhardt had this picture that uh, there is uh, at this correspondence point uh, the black hole, the BTZ black hole, would yeah, be yeah. Uh, highly excited, uh, uh, right. stringy state. So, is that? Uh, uh, is that uh, yeah. the point of, uh, and that's in the type? Yes, yes, yes. That, that's that's definitely related. I mean, here, well, the, there are different correspondence points because then in ADS3, there is a new parameter, which is uh, K, the radius related to the radius of ADS3, right? Mm -hmm. So what Lorenz was discussing uh, was the, the, when the radius becomes a four, the alpha prime, right? Right that uh, the full theory would become yeah. a free theory. Right. Um, and indeed, in, in that approximation, then the, yeah, you could either think of the gas of strings or, or the black hole. So the two become equivalent. Um, so, what, yeah. we the, what we were discussing here was the situation where the radius is very is large, right? It's fairly large, but the black but hole is you, small. Well, so, but, you, you can consider various things. You're free to consider whatever you want. But, uh, uh, but but there's uh, there's no way to continuously connect that to the uh, uh, mm, uh, to the large uh, uh, to the uh, to the large radius limit. I guess uh, yours. I mean yours. And uh, it's, uh, so whether. There's a continuous family of solutions which uh, uh, connects uh, this uh, particular the stringy correspondence point to the large radius correspondence point. Uh, uh. Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, these are different hmm. correspondence points. Maybe there is one. I, I, I don't know. Um, hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it is possible that there is there is maybe a connection. Perhaps uh, thinking about the uh, well. I mean, the ADA three involves an S five rings and fundamental strings. Uh, yeah, I, I I I don't think there is a direct connection between. Hmm between this and the, the other one. So, but a direct connection would be that they, there is some duality or solution generating technique that relates them. I, I don't think so. But... Uh, 
are you saying that the w x y in the first line uh, lambda minus w x y in the first line is that w is the same as the w in the second line yes it's the same functional form yeah but uh, it it comes after conjugation with the lambdas right i mean the final w in the second expression in the second equality the w square yes. that mm -hmm. comes after conjugation with the lambda minus and the uh, the d term that gets left over after integration over the theta plus yes so so the lambda minus has a, has a fermionic superfield and a d term right an auxiliary field yeah. and then in the free action there is a term quadratic in the auxiliary fields yeah. Um, so then when you integrate out the auxiliary field, you get this uh, W squared. Yeah. So what I'm asking is whether this W in this W square is the same as the W in the previous term. Is it of the same form? It can't be of the same yeah, form. Yeah, it's right? the same form, the same function, the same function. Here it was a function of super fields. Here is a function of bosonic fields. For instance, for, for instance, for uh, ordinary, say, super uh, symmetric theories, you have the yes. super potential in terms of just a single scalar, phi or phi phi or something like that, phi phi dagger or something like that. And when you integrate over the thetas, it gets converted to d mu phi, d mu phi or something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. So, yeah. So it, it is different in this case. So you just get the square of the function that appears here. Uh, as you as you say, in, in, in more familiar cases, we get the derivative of that function. I think this is the formula you have in mind. So it's different yeah. in, that, in that. So in, in that principle. case, in that case, the derivative doesn't appear, you're saying. Yeah, that's right. So Juan, yeah. uh, so this uh, specialty of B greater than six, could this be seen, for example, in the fact that CFT may not have an exact marginal operator? I ju just a question, I mean, I, I, I don't know necessarily if um, well, if you start from the black hole side, right, there is some CFT describing the black hole and it will have a marginal operator, right? But mm -hmm. it's more like what would happen when you approach the higher than temperature. Perhaps uh, there might be some branch where the black hole exists all the way to the higher than temperature. And then there might be some other branch where the string, uh, some free string phase exists. Uh, you know, uh, there will be some overlapping range of masses where both the black hole and the string uh, and the just free string from, exist. Just from the CFT alone, it seems kind of remarkable that such a CFT would have an exact marginal deformation, although from the space-time point of view, it is... Yes, yes, I agree. Yes, yes. Now, notice that the CFT, even when we have the black hole, it has an exactly marginal deformation and it also uh, has, a, has a relevant deformation. Mm. That we fine tune. Yeah. Thanks. But uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it has a bit to do with the non compact target space, right? So the marginal, the fact that there is this marginal deformation, you can understand very, very far away, right? You have just flat space times a circle, and it's just mm. varying the radius of the circle is the marginal yeah, yeah. deformation. Right, right, right. Yes. So the non-trivial statement is that for any value of that radius, there is some way of filling it in, which... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, thanks. Okay. So I have, I have a question. Uh, so you, you mentioned that uh, in, in type 2, uh, you, you consider that in, embedding to a string the gauge duality. Somehow is, you try to say that it has some connection with this um, phase trans transition for the holonomy? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Here. Um, so, so can, can, can you uh, elaborate a, a bit? So here, in this paper, this um, by uh, they, they consider ADS five for is uh, uh, and uh, for uh, for the equal for um, DRT, right? Yes. 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 Well, I I I'm not sure that this. Um, Yeah, this this so the discussion of this transition with d equal to four and so on that uh, we were having in this talk mm -hmm. does not directly apply to ADS five times S five because ADS five times S five when the radius of ADS five is large is more like a ten dimensional uh, situation um, and as we were saying before in ten dimensions the situation is slightly different but uh, you 
here, this was just, um, it, it might be that there is a transition like this uh, for perhaps when the radius of the ADS space is further one, perhaps, um, or maybe slightly bigger than one, and then maybe that uh, that transition happens uh, in this particular way. Um, also, it could be that there is some other ADS CFT setup where you have only four uh, large dimensions and let's say six small dimensions, and then you could uh, attempt to think about the discussion more like this. So, but I think this was meant as um, well. I mean, it's something similar in the same uh, neighborhood of, of ideas, I would say. And uh, I, okay. I feel okay. that it, it might be possible. Yeah, it might be possible that we, if we think of uh, uh, probing the black hole with winding strings, right? The strings winding, and we can compute winding BEVs and so on. We might be able to see some uh, signature of this transition. So, as I said, I doesn't look very. Okay. Namely, the area is large, and so we'll have this factor of e to the minus n times the area, but perhaps you need to subtract uh, some infinity. And maybe then you could see something like this. I, I, I could say more about why uh, it's not too obvious. But in some ideal world, you would you would calculate, uh, you would consider a string, a string winding, and you, the expectation value of winding uh, string modes would have a different uh, behavior in the horowitz polchinski and in the black hole side uh, when you consider multiply one strings. Uh, All right, OK. If that were the case, then it would be a transition of this kind. Well, it would be morally similar to this kind of transition. Um, I, I have some confusions about that. I, maybe it does work and just missing something, so. OK, thanks. Juan. Uh... I didn't understand your comments vis-a-vis uh, -vis fuzzballs and, you know, in the strings meeting when you were anchoring the fuzzball discussion, you brought up this work. I guess you were thinking about it then also, but I, I thought you felt it would throw more light on fuzzballs today. I don't know. I didn't quite understand. Can you say what 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 is the connection between, say, the HP solution and the charge solutions you mentioned, etc.? I didn't quite get that well fastballs uh, usually discuss for near extreme for for extremal black holes and mm -hmm. charged black holes mm -hmm. because that's supposed to be an easier case right mm -hmm. um, usually it is said that the the fastball is uh exists in the same regime in parameter space as the as the black holes right mm. that right. either you have the black hole picture or you have the fastball picture now these solutions are um, well, they exist in different regimes of parameter space. So you have some region, some region where you have a black hole, some other region where you have something more similar to a fastball. Mm -hmm. um, and these solutions are, so these solutions in this regime are very close to, well, people have discussed in the past whether you could have a near extremal or non-extremal fastball. So this is an example of something like that. Now, um, it's a non-extremal configuration. It uh, has as much entropy as the black hole, essentially. I mean, it's, it's just the maximal entropy configuration. Uh, and it's near extremal. It's not, it's not exactly extremal. Um, I see. I see. And, and it, it, is, it is what the word says. It's some fuzzy things of strings. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> um, I see. But uh, yeah, so I think it, it's not, well, um, I think when people talk about fastballs, they want the black hole and this fastball description to be valid at the same time as being two alternative descriptions. Mm -hmm. This is not what is happening here. Uh, I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. It's more like you vary by parameter, and in some regime of parameter space, the black hole is a better description, and in some other regime. The, yeah, the fastball is a better description. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, can I ask a question, Juan? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, firstly, it was a great talk. Uh, the question is the following, that uh, all this discussion that you gave is in, uh, is in uh, Euclidean, Euclidean space time, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, suppose in principle, one can solve this problem of the uh, correspondence uh, yeah, yeah. intermediate. Suppose in principle, you can do it in some way, some formalism. Uh, would you would you say that uh, one has sort of resolved the problem of the black hole singularity also? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say so. You so, wouldn't say so. I yeah. see. But when when uh, we still have something to do with Lorentzian in Lorentzian signature. Yeah. Yes, that is true. But uh, in some sense, uh, uh, the uh, the spectrum of uh, the uh, the theory one is looking at uh, can be computed from the Euclidean point of view. It's, it's a Lorentzian yes, yes. concept. And so you right. wouldn't see anything very, uh, in principle, I'm just saying, so I'm not saying that one can compute the spectrum of the uh, Hamiltonian yes. of the black hole or the string or stuff like that. In principle, is it the in principle solution of that? And that was one of our motivations actually to do this. I see, I see, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. I think, well, for example, I don't think that our present understanding of ADS-CFT, for example, gives us uh, information about the singularity, right? In principle, we could compute the spectrum of Jan Mel's theory with somebody, yes. somebody gives you, let's say, a list of numbers. And we don't know how to recognize uh, in that list of numbers whether we have a singularity or not, right? Uh, or, or exactly what happens to an observer when he he or she falls into the singularity and what, you know, the, we don't know how to answer such questions. And I, I don't think that having uh, this, this, this Walsh at CFT would answer this question either. So, uh, and, the question uh, is about case, the signature of uh, in the ADS CFT correspondence. What, what is the uh, signature of the uh, Singularity at large end, that's the issue. Mostly we have understood yeah, yeah, that, horizons. Uh, that's, uh, that, yeah, that's a good question. And I, 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 I don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, we, we, I could advertise a paper that we wrote recently where um, we looked at one point. So it's a very, in, very indirect. Uh, well, people, people have suggested some things. So some indirect. Uh, ways to get it by doing some analytic continuation of correlators. So there was a paper by Hubini, Clevan, Schenker, and perhaps some other people uh, that were looking at two-point functions, and certain analytic continuation of two-point functions. Uh, and recently we wrote a paper where we had some one-point functions and we were analytically continuing in the mass and there was some signature, not so much of the singularity, but of the time to the singularity. Um, so, but this, these are very indirect uh, approaches. I, maybe there is. Uh, yeah, like what, to, uh, follow up on Spenta's question. If you took the black hole solution in Euclidean space and you could you analytically continue t to minus to i t, you get a Lorentzian yeah. black hole solution. Yeah. Now, for these H p solutions, presumably that's difficult to do since this winding mode only exists in Euclidean space. Yes, 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 yes. So the question is, is there any sense in which there is a Lorentzian continuation of the solution? Yeah, yeah, this is, I think this is an excellent question. And the, um, in particular, yeah, so um, the, the best thing I could say is that the Lorentzian continuation should be some gas of strings. Um, so, but I think, and, and you would continue not not chi itself, but let's say the stress tensor of chi and so on, you would get in Lorentzian signature, which would be some average of the. Uh, but I think I think the question is what is the what is the Lorentzian interpretation of chi itself, right? Chi appeared in the solution, in the Euclidean solution. Is there a Lorentzian interpretation of chi? And I. I have the feeling there should be one, and it would be pretty interesting to find what it is, but I don't know. Um, so chi is some quantity of the base, a simple equation. It's like a, a condensate of some kind, but it's some kind, kind of condensate that exists in Euclidean signature, not, not Lorentzian signature. I, I would, I, I would, yeah, let, let me make a comment about this. 
I think it's not relevant, but uh, well, maybe it's, it's very well, it's loosely connected. So actually this HP solution, so the mathematical solution um, was found uh, before by Ruffini and others in the context of boson stars. So you can take um, massive, just free massive particles, free massive bosons, and you consider a situation where these bosons condense, let's say in the lowest, uh, lowest level, and are self-gravitating. And then the equations that you get are mathematically identical to the equations that you get in this story, where chi is the wave function of these bosons, right? And in that case, well, we have some interpretation of the chi also in the Lorentzian theory, it's just this the wave function of these bosons, and it makes sense both. Well, it makes sense. I mean, there the, the whole discussion makes sense in Lorentzian signature. Um, so, and, and it, it's reflecting some symmetry breaking uh, process in the Lorentzian signature. So it's some, you know, uh, formation of a superfluid of these particles and so on. And so you could you could ask what is the analogous thing for chi? Uh, and uh, th this question is seems to be somewhat related to another question, which uh, uh, also is uh, some question I don't know the answer to, which is um, a question in thermal gauge theories. <clears throat> so if you have a, th a thermal gauge theory, you have <clears throat> the holonomy of the of the gauge field that can have various uh, symmetry breaking pro properties and so on. For example, when you have confinement, the confinement and so on. And um, so, for example, in the in the high temperature phase of uh, QCD or some other uh, gauge theories, uh, you can have some CN uh, symmetry breaking and so on. Um, but if you go to Lorentzian signature, you can ask, well, what is the signature of this n vacuo, this various vacuo in Lorentzian signature? And I, I, I don't know. So it's not. Uh, so in Lorentzian signature, there's just one vacuum. There's the thermal vacuum, apparently. And we don't know how to think about these other possibilities. And th this has a similar flavor. I mean, after all, under the gauge gravity duality, this guy is related to the holonomy. So, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's similar in the sense that you can. Um, it's a perfectly well-defined quantity in Euclidean signature, but it's confusing from the Lorentzian point of view. It looks like, you know, it looks like it should be some property that you would need to talk about the thermophile double to, to really have some Lorentzian discussion of this quantity. So there may be like a family of thermophile, that there may be n thermophile double states that you could think about. And, uh, that would reproduce all the local correlators. Going back to the question of the superpotential, when you integrate yeah. out the thetas, you usually get bosonic rams plus fermionic rams. What happens to the fermionic rams? Uh, I, I didn't discuss them explicitly, but you do get some fermions. So the, the fermions sort of go along with the right. Some fermions become massive and some remain massless. So, and when you are when you are considering the solution, yeah, uh, don't you need to consider? The you do need to consider the fermions. So it's uh, yeah, the fermions are important. I just didn't didn't go into all the details, but uh, of course, uh, like when we are discussing all these models, like at this level, so we have this manifold W equal to zero, but also we have the fermions that live in the sort of tangent space. Uh, so we have only right moving fermions in this case, and then we would need to consider them as we consider this flow. So the flow involves the fermions. No, I'm concerned with when you're considering the solution, when you're considering the specific solution for W. Uh -huh. So you, you would have yeah. also... No, yeah, at that level, you just said W equal to zero. There is no, there are no fermions here. You just uh, consider W equal to zero. And th that's only... Um, a description. So when, when we talk about finding the solution where W is zero and restricting to that solution, that's a classical description, right? The full, when, when we are at, uh, let's say, small radius and uh, in the full quantum theory, we just have the superpotential and we're just flowing into to the infrared and we have the bosons mixed up with the fermions and so on. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. 
Okay. Are there any more questions for Juan? So if not, let's, uh, let's all thank uh, Juan again for the very interesting talk and discussion. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you and have a good evening. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, thanks. thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Juan. Fantastic Bye. talk. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah.